Hello and welcome to our episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name's Jacob and today we've got another video for you dinosaur fans out there because I think the Jurassic Park bug has kind of hit me at the moment and I've got yeah more Mattel Jurassic Park figures. In particular I got this lovely lovely big box that I got from um, Toys R Us. This is a Babies are us on it as well, which is not something I really want to have delivered to me in a package. Calling me a baby, but eh, whatever. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, um, let's just dive right in. So, what I should have in here is a figure set, which I had no idea existed until recently. Apparently this thing actually didn't come out that long ago. But since I only started to kind of pay attention to the Mattel Jurassic Park, Jurassic World line of figures a couple of um, weeks ago, I completely missed out on it. And this is actually something that I have been wanting in my collection for a very long time. Probably since I was a child. So, <laughs> we've got... Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> Opening it up. The, oh there it is, the Jurassic World Legacy Collection, Tyrannosaurus Rex Escape Pack. Now, I for one, couldn't give a shit about the T-Rex in here, I kind of don't even care that much about little Timmy in the corner there, but what I do really, really want from this, this pack is this, this, this thing right here. We got the, um, what's it called? The, the Ford Explorer, I think is what it's called. Look at it. It's, it's real. There's an actual figure of this thing. An actual toy version of it out there. A couple of years back, I was working on this model kit. So this is a bootleg of the Horizon T-Rex model kit, which is actually originally based off a maquette that they used in the making of Jurassic Park, one of the Stan Winston Studios maquettes. And I was looking for a model car, a model of this exact Ford Explorer back in the day that would scale with this T-Rex. And for the life of me, I could not find one, at least not one that I could afford. You know, I stopped sort of really paying attention to Jurassic Park, Jurassic World figures for a while. I'd always be eyeing them in the stores casually when I went in there to look for Godzilla related stuff. But... Now that I've kind of jumped on this sh on this little bandwagon, uh, I've uh, I've discovered that this set exists, and I, I managed to get my hands on one. And there it is. There's an actual uh, version of this car, uh, which is just an iconic piece of movie history, just finally brought out in figure form, which is really really cool, really really cool. And of course, we got the uh, T Rex in there as well, which. I'm actually curious, is this the same T-Rex? Because obviously I've got the brand new Hammond Collection T-Rex here, which is gorgeous. And I have a very long in-depth video about all my thoughts about this thing. But this car would just mm, be perfect to put next to this thing. Because I've always dream dreamed of having like a little diorama in my collection with this car and a T-Rex. And it would just be so, so sweet. And they, they put it out. And um, yeah... I'm actually really digging the presentation of this box, I, I, I should add. I, I feel kind of bad about opening it, to be entirely honest with you guys. I am, um, I almost don't want to, because it looks really nice, but I think, I think I might leave the Rex in there, because I think, is it the same sculpt as this uh, Extreme Damage T-Rex? It looks about the same. I think it is, except where it doesn't have the uh, Extreme Damage feature. The paintwork on it looks nicer. I actually, actually like the paintwork on this one. I don't want to say it's better than the, uh, than the, the, um, Hammond collection figure, but I actually like that there's a little bit of a cleaner paint job on the head. I feel like they went a little bit overboard with the dark paint on the snout and on just more areas of the face. I would have preferred if they kept their paintwork primarily just around the eye, just darkening that area and 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 lightening up some of the the rest of the paintwork on the head. I don't know, I'm really picky about it, but 
but I actually like the sort of simplified paintwork on this T-Rex here. It actually kind of looks a little bit more faithful to the film to me. Not like 100%. I still think overall this is a much better version of the uh, original Jurassic Park T-Rex. Obviously this um, Hammond Collection one, but that's, that's kind of interesting. I, I do like the look of this one. It's got a nice color to it. Regardless, I have to get this car in hand. I, I feel bad because this box is actually really nicely done. Nice presentation on this thing. But I want the car and part of me has actually been really tempted because again, originally I was just looking to see if, if you know, it was really difficult to find like an actual official Jurassic Park version of that car that I could have paired with this one. So I figured maybe there's like a generic model of that type of car that I could paint up to look like the Jurassic Park version in that scale, but I couldn't find it. And that kind of left a taste in my mind or like a little bit of a, a yearning in my mind to do a little bit of customization on this particular project. So now that I actually have the car in hand here, I'm actually tempted to actually tweak it a little bit because I've seen a few videos of people actually doing that to theirs, uh, doing a little bit of paint work here and some tweaking of it. And it looked really nice and made the car look so professional that I might do that to this one. We'll, we'll see because again, I have like a dozen projects going on and I, I always say, oh, I want to do this and I'm going to do this and, and then it just kind of ends up lying around. I think I have ADHD, so that might have something to do with, with why I have so many un, unresolved projects. And I keep telling you guys, oh, I'm going to do this, and then, and then again, I almost never actually do it. I don't actually do a lot of reviews that I tell you guys I'm going to do. I always do like these unboxing videos where I'm like, I'm going to do a re full review of this really soon, so stay tuned, and then like a year or two goes by and nothing comes of it. So I do apologize about that, guys. I know it's frustrating, but it's just kind of, I don't know. It's just how I am. Again, I think I might have ADHD problem managing interests and motivations and stuff like that. Anyway, pulling it out, not too difficult. I just pulled it out by the T-Rex and this is actually a really sweet backdrop. This would not look half bad just on a shelf as is in all honesty it's except for little timmy floating here i don't like the way he's packed and i've seen some other reviews as well and they've they've mentioned the same thing because i think everything else you can kind of safely remove and make it something that you can probably for the most part put back in to the box without overly damaging anything but in order to get little Timmy off here, you've got to kind of tear him off or cut away this plastic and it's not really replaceable. You've got to damage it, basically, in some way. So, not too happy about that. But I do really like this box. And if this T-Rex here, it wasn't as massive, and I'm kind of wondering, does this T-Rex really scale well with this car since she is a little bit bigger than the T-Rex that does come with this set? I don't know. I'm definitely going to have them together because of course I am, but um, it's still kind of interesting that they chose to go for smaller T-Rex for this set and this car. So I, I kind of wonder which one scales more accurately. There's these like weird do wackies down here, which I hear that you just have to like twist and the car should pull off in theory. Let's try it. So we just got these thingies that's okay oh that works i just gotta turn it the right way and off she plops or off it plops i guess don't have to call the car a she as well although i don't see why the car should be gendered in any form so anyway here's the car i love this thing look at that it's a nice you know solid little car it's a it's bigger than i was expecting in hand actually I mean, it's it's very, very simple, bare bones, you know, it's your basic sort of toy car, but I just have this ingrained in me from my childhood because the original Jurassic Park film means a lot to me, even as a Godzilla collector, because I, I really probably wouldn't be into the stuff that I am if it weren't for being such a uh, dinosaur fan as a child, which was a really big part of my childhood, and a big part of that was 
the original Jurassic Park movie. This car and this sort of specific design is just such an iconic part of my childhood and what kind of made me the uh, the person I am today without sounding too corny. But uh, yeah, it kind of did. So this is really, really cool. Really great to see. Uh, I've heard that the, um, the logos aren't like 100% spot on. They're a bit too small and spaced out and maybe some little bits are off and... Of course, some bits are left unpainted and, and made, like, overly simplified. That's, you know, to be expected from a toy like this. But, this is really nice. Just from, from a distance at a glance, really nice. They didn't have to go into as much detail as they did. And, like I was saying, some people have actually gone in and they've painted up the edges of these windows of black paints they've even added like lights and sound to this thing and all sort of stuff like that so i'm i might give that a go but like i was saying earlier don't count on it because i might take like five years before i actually get to that project but it's on my bucket list of things to do now so interesting uh this thing apparently is this yeah there it is the spring feature where you can kind of ram your t-rex's head into it like so and imitate that Seen from the film where the T-Rex's head pushes the glass down and the children are under it screaming, which probably all of you guys already know is actually real, real fear in those children's eyes because that bit of glass was not meant to fall down. It, it was a, a, it was an accident. It was um, during the filming process, so that's a nice little factoid about that. But yeah, this is really cool. Of course, I'm going to give you guys a nice look at this car. We've got the lovely Jurassic Park logo on the back of the car. It even has the, the actual legal information on it. It says Ford there, and there it says um, something, 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 something. I can't read that from my monitor, sorry. Explorer, XLT. So yeah, the Ford Explorer. Got a nice look at the wheels here. I think something I could do with the wheels, which other people have done, is actually paint some black paint in in the back of them there. Maybe add some weathering. Add like a more matte color black paint to the, the actual wheels could look good. Uh, depending on what kind of look we're going for. Uh, some people, like I've said, they've actually cut out the lights here and put in some clear plastic and stuff and actually, you know, engineered it that way with lights inside it. I'm not going to go that far, I don't think... I'm going to bother with any electronics if I do pursue this project, but regardless, the actual stickers they use with the lights are actually really nice. They're quite convincing from a distance that they could actually be real sort of reflective silver lights, so I like that. And the doors should open. Yes, they open. Oh, that's neat. That's always... That's a really nice feature on, on something like this, because they didn't have to do that. They really didn't, but... I don't know why, that, that adds like a, a whole step up for me for this, this toy car here. I, I really dig that. We look at it from the top. Very, very cool. The back here is just like open and there's this big open space, which I, I think I want to cover that up, make it look more realistic if I do like actually get around to editing this thing. But that is sweet. Yeah, I'm... Again, I, I think I mentioned this like every one of my videos, but if you guys uh, don't know, I do have an Atomic Vinyl Reviews Instagram page, which I do post a lot of figure photos and stuff, and I'm definitely going to have to do a nice little photo shoot of this one and our new Hammond Collection T-Rex together, because that will be really nice. We've got even the license plate on the back. Not centered properly, so that's kind of bothering me a tiny bit. Not that big a deal, but... I'm sure it bothers some of you people more than me. <laughs> and the other side is some basic uh, detail work down here, kind of like you'd see on a bunch of toy cars where they just kind of have a loose imprint of, of a bunch of uh, car detail stuff down here. That's nice. And we got some uh, made in China, probably, I'm guessing. And the number of which, whichever one this is. Nice. That is really cool. This is kind of making me want to get some more characters in figure form from Jurassic Park. I've seen that they're going to be releasing the 
Alan Grant Heaven Collection figure really soon, which I'm not too excited about because I think his face sculpt is a little bit trashy looking. But I would really like to get him and Ian Malcolm and uh, Lord Dern's character as well. That would look really, really cool to have them like in, in a car like this. I potentially have it with the T-Rex. And here we go. Here is the Mattel Hammond Collection T-Rex compared with this lovely Ford Explorer from Jurassic Park. That's just iconic right there. Now I'm just going to lower the T-Rex because the, fit, the, the only thing that bothers me about this figure is the feet being way too big. So we can just put those out of frame and then we don't have to think about them. And then we have just this iconic shot of these two together. Very sweet. Very, very sweet. Mm, do I want to take him out of the packaging? For now, I'm going to leave him in. Just for now. So I do really apologize to you guys. But I'm going to leave him in and I'm going to leave the Rex in. It's a cool Rex. I re actually really dig this one. I think it does look a little bit better than uh, this Rex here. This one looks a little bit more toy-like, although I do wish it, just like a, almost all of these figures, I do wish they had more going on paint-wise on them. But regardless, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I, do, I do still like, like it for what it is. And finally, I'm going to bring in the Horizon kit. So this is, like I was saying, it's a bootleg version. It's a, a recasting from Thailand. So it's not perfect. And it also broke off the arm at one point. And the paintwork's not finished. It started to chip off. So it's, you know, it could, it's seeing better days. It could be a little better. But bringing them in together, they look really good. I think they scale really well, actually. So I, I can't believe it. Because I, I really was just wishing this thing into existence back when I was building this this one a number of years ago and lo and behold here it is they actually made the damn thing since then in a in the perfect scale pretty much so that's sweet and we can you know do the thing and then you can try and bite the car and that's all cool and fun but i'm gonna leave it here i really love this one i i hope they do more sets like these because this is just like they just manifested something that we we're, we're all dying for it's just no excuse that a set like this took this long to, to put out. Because it's one of the most iconic movies of all time and one of the most iconic movie scenes of all time. And to have something like this put out is a must-have for, for all of us Jurassic Park fans, I think. So I'm really happy about that. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I do strongly recommend this set if you guys can find it still. Uh, I do know that a lot of you guys out there, especially in the U.S., seem to struggle to find a lot of these figures once they they sell out. Strangely enough, here in Australia, I, I think they're kind of easier to come by. I could be wrong because I haven't kind of been paying attention to this stuff as much. But I've always noticed that whenever I'm on some of these forums um, on Facebook, for example, in these Jurassic Park uh, collector groups... I see everyone complaining, oh, all these are sold out everywhere in every store that I'm, I'm in. But then here in Australia, when I'm just wandering around stores, I just, I, I always see plenty of them. Not that I've seen this one in stores. This one, I think, was like on sale in Australia like a number of months ago. And I managed to still find like a straggler online somewhere from Toys R Us. It was probably a, a bit more expensive than it would have been had I have actually tried to get it a, a while back when it was in stores. But I don't doubt that I probably would have been able to find one in some of my local stores at the time. So that's kind of a little interesting thing. Um, if there's any Australian, like, hardcore Jurassic Park and Jurassic World fans out there that um, have been paying attention to this stuff longer than I have, is that the case? Or is it actually the case that this stuff also sells out here? just as fast as it does say over in the US from what I hear or am I just misinformed I don't know let me know in the comments if you, you're aware but yeah that is it for this video guys I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more Godzilla and Dinosaur and Jurassic Park content because we're definitely gonna have more of that on the channel yeah see you in one of my future videos but until then may all your vinyl be irradiated vinyl over and out bye <laughs>